This 2019 paper from a Taiwanese university claims that by feeding small images of candlestick data into a convolutional neural network, that we can achieve an edge over and above simply random chance or flipping a coin. In fact, they're claiming an extremely ambitious 92.2% accuracy reading. And so I thought I'd go on ahead and re-implement this myself and make myself a billionaire in the process. Now, the rough idea of this paper is explained in this diagram. So we have our standard testing and training split grabbing data from Yahoo Finance for some Taiwanese and Indonesian market indexes, a bit like the FTSE or the NASDAQ, but for their respective countries. Training on the data from 2000 to the beginning of 2017, and then testing on the 18 months after that. So we grab this open, high, low, close data and convert it into these small images that you see. So it's a 50 by 50 pixel image with a certain amount of candlesticks in it. So this is the 20 period, so 20 candles. There's also a 10 period and also a five period. And they also have even smaller 20 by 20 pixel images as well. So it looks something like this, basically. You have a folder. This is all Apple data. And so each day gets its own image. We take a snapshot, we move one candle forward. We take another snapshot, moving forward one candle at a time. I suspect the reason the images are so small are to keep the training data small so that it can run on devices with not a lot of power. After all, this was 2019 when the paper was published. After the images are generated, the image data is fed into a whole bunch of different machine learning techniques for comparison purposes. But the main one that they're promoting in this video is the convolutional neural network. So that's the one I'll be focusing on and the one that they claim has the best results overall. So we take the pixel data from the image, feed that into the network, and that will predict whether we're going up or we're going down in the next candle, theoretically. Now, there are a few red flags with this paper that we can see straight off the map. The first is some data leakage between the training and the testing set here. We're using a 20 period look back in the largest case, and therefore we should leave at least 20 days of data between the training and testing set to make sure that there's no data leakage there. Another issue with the data is survivorship bias. So it's not entirely clear how they put together the data set. If you just use the constituents of this index today, it's going to be biased in a bullish direction because all the failed companies have left the index and the up and coming ones which are doing well have joined the index. So that's something which is a little bit unclear. And the third thing is just an overall lack of specificity. So for example, it's not even particularly clear what the labels are for the data that the neural network is being trained on. It says here up and down. So we can conclude from that that it's probably predicting whether it's a green or a red candle, but the label could also easily be, is the close price of the next candle higher or lower than the current closing candle? For the actual neural network architecture, which we can see here, it's also not very specific at all about what parameters are being used in each of these layers. So for the dropout, for example, what percentage is being applied on each of these dropout layers? And for the neural net itself, is padding being used? etc etc there's also no code or data provided with this paper which makes replication a lot harder than it needs to be but nonetheless i soldiered on and wrote up a implementation in python and what i found really surprised me actually so we have two different programs essentially in this repo which you can find in the description the first is the chart generator so this is going to actually generate the images i can delete them here and then run the generator. You pick a specific ticker or tickers separated by commas, a start date and an end date. The window size is how many candles to include in each image. And the image size is 
the width and height of the final image produced in pixels. So in this case, 50. So I can do that. It'll grab all of the appropriate Apple data, slice those up into up and down sections. So we can see, for example, here, this image is in the up section. So it means the next candle should be green. As we can see, it's green. And then the next one should be green, so on and so forth. That's the chart generator. And as you know, if you've done any deep learning work, that's actually most of the work in this process is preparing and generating data. We can train the neural network itself with this command, which you can again find in the readme in this repo. And what we find broadly is that the loss gets stuck at a value of 0.693, which essentially means that no learning is taking place. It's just getting stuck at this value, not really learning from the data provided. And what's interesting is if we look at the evaluation, so on our testing data, in my case, I got data up till 2022 and then did my testing on data from 2023 onwards, leaving a little gap for that data leakage. What we find is that the network is just predicting the same label for every chart. So any chart that comes through, it just predicts that it will go up. And it's decided that that is the most effective technique and that it can't really derive any other data or signal from the data that is given and the architecture provided. The reason why it picked the up rather than the down label is simply that there are more up labels in the training set, which actually gives it a slightly better than a coin flip chance of being successful. If it just says up all the time, it will be right slightly better than 50-50. And so broadly speaking, what the neural network has discovered here or re-uncovered is the momentum effect that stocks that go up are more likely to go up. But it doesn't really have anything to do with these charts that we're generating or technical analysis or predicting based on the previous candles, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. There doesn't seem to be any signal here at all. Now I did a few sanity checks here just to make sure that I hadn't done anything crazily wrong. The first is an overfitting test. So rather than taking all the data and feeding that into the network, instead only feed 64 images in. So if I run this, UV run over fitting, what we find is the loss goes pretty much straight to zero after a few epochs. And if you run it again on the training data, it scores 100%, which means that it's essentially memorized the whole of the training set perfectly. And then when running that on the test set, you get, you know, even below a coin flip accuracy here. This is just a sanity check to make sure that the model is capable of learning. So it can learn to get 100% accuracy on this small data set and by overfitting, which obviously doesn't actually pan out to any real performance. But it's just a check that the data loading infrastructure is working, the pixel values have been loading correctly, the model is functioning to some extent. And then finally, I did a label permutation test. So every single image has a label associated with it, depending on the next candle is going up or down. And obviously the whole point of this experiment was that theoretically the image and the label could be used to train a neural network and it would find the similarities between the ones that went up and the ones that went down and it would be able to be slightly better than a coin flip in the future. What we can do is we can just rearrange these labels in a completely random order and that destroys all of the signal from our data set so that some of them are labeled up when they actually go down, etc., etc., etc. And what we find when we run this script, so UV run label permutation test, what we find when we run this test is that we get pretty much the same results, whether the labels are the original accurate labels or they're just randomly shuffled in some other order, which again confirms that the model isn't really pulling out any signal at all from the images. It's getting the exact same accuracy either time. It's just picking the most likely option, which somewhat ironically just yields the momentum factor, which is obviously well known and studied about. Just that stocks that go up more on average are likely to keep going up. And so by betting that it's going to go up, you're slightly better than a coin flip at least. And so while I may have not 
built myself a money printing machine that is 92% accurate by implementing this paper. I did learn a lot about what not to do by picking apart all of the different methodological problems with this paper, like the data leakage, like the survivorship bias, like the lack of specificity and reproducibility due to no code and no data being provided, as well as no hyperparameters for the overall architecture. If you want to have a go with this repo, with this architecture, have a play around with it and try and see if you can find anything in this data, you can check out the description below where you can find the code that I've built here and I'm using in this video.